we'll call a public works meeting to order, everyone. Um, start out with uh, roll call. Um, Alder Person Savaglio. Present. Alder Person Perella. Yeah. And Alder Person Salazar is excused. So we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty, and we'll start out with the introduction of committee members and staff. Uh, I'll start out myself. I am Dean Decker, uh, all the first from the 6th District uh, and chair and chairperson. Hi everybody, my name is Marcus Savalio. I'm the older person from the 5th District. Grazie per Vila, District 7 and Vice Chair of the Committee. Brian Sorensen, Mayor. I'm Mary Routman, I live on South 21st Street, just a resident. Barb Lindsay, live on South 21st Street. Andy Lindsay, South 21st Street. Kevin Jump, Engineering. Rudas Carlos, Finance. Rick Nye, DPW, Water Vehicle. Terry Aaron, City Administrator. Jason Blasiola, Streets and Sanitation. Steve Joss, our DPW. Mike Loomis, Public Works, Facilities and Traffic. David Beeble, Director, Public Works. Don Sokolowski, Public Works. Caitlin Krieger, Finance Director. Thomas Cameron, Assistant City Attorney. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, go with uh, 2.1 approval of the minutes from the September 28th meeting. Move to approve. Second. Motions were made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, votes are approved. Uh, we're going to move up 3.3 uh, because we have some guests here and that way they don't have to sit through all the rest of the <laughs> festivities. So uh, we're going to start with 3.3 communication from Barb Lindsay submitting a neighborhood petition requesting the installation of a street light on South 21st Street between Broadway Avenue and David Avenue. This is a discussion only. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we sure. received the communication and we already started some action on it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike Wilmus, who facilities and traffic it deals quite a bit with Alliant Energy for okay. street light requests, okay. and he can explain kind of how we're kind of fast tracking this. We noticed that the block, I believe immediately west has a street light mid block and um, it would be advisable to put one on 21st Street in this area as well. So I'm okay. going to turn over to Mike. Okay. He didn't said it all. <laughs> Does that work? It works. So, yeah. so <laughs> in, a, in a long story short, um, David, the director of public works, myself and, and uh, Ryan says, we could just kind of look at the the area real quick, the adjacent streets and stuff like that, we fast tracked it right down to um, uh, Warren Gum at Alliant Energy on September 29th. So the petition went through. Um, it may take a little bit. It's, it's not going to be an overnight thing. So what they do, they send it to their, their engineering staff and they'll look at a location and stuff like that. But it'll be in the mid block area and stuff like that. So. Excellent. So, very quick, it's you no, know, we, we get these requests here and there and in the dark areas, and when we start to look at the uh, adjacent streets and what they've done, mm -hmm. they missed yours. So, yeah. but um, like I said, we submitted it to uh, Alliant MG on September 29th, and we're good to go there. Great. Yeah. Well, thank, oh, thank, you thank you very much. <laughs> thank you all for I coming. Didn't have to argue. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we knew the mayor was coming. <laughs> 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 All righty. Well, then we'll move right on to 3.1. Uh, resolution 7421-22, October 4th, 2021, the document 5.7. Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to release part of an existing drainage easement and accept a new drainage easement on property owned by Fifth Generation Properties, LLC, Gateway Drive between Wheaton Creek Road and Barron's Parkway. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, that is pretty, pretty, uh, the best thing is probably looking at the certified map. It kind of shows the existing drainage easement, which is more uh, basically like an L. And now we're going to have the new easement is going to be the diagonal and we're getting rid of the L section. 
uh, as part of the addition and work that they're doing on, on this warehouse. Um, so it serves the purpose, uh, keeps drainage flowing, and it's um, basically a, a swap of easement area. So we're, we, we recommend that this should be approved. I have a question for the city attorney. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I have recently met with the principal of fifth generations properties about purchasing a home we don't have any sort of contract, anything. Do I need to stay out of this one? Am I good to vote? What would you like me to do? He hasn't made a decision on what he'd like to do yet. It's for this house. Is So it is the house that you're potentially buying in this certified survey map, or is it no different? different this problem? is the warehouse, correct? Yep, this is a warehouse. This is a project he's working on that I have nothing to do with. Just want to make sure that I'm not following up with it. Yeah, I, I have no issues with you voting on this. Perfect. Good. Move to approve. Second. <laughs> <laughs> second. Any other discussion on this issue? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Okay. Uh, 3.2 resolution 75 21 22 October 4th, 2021. Mm -hmm. Document 5.8, resolution establishing the 2022 budget appropriations and the 2021 tax levy for use during the calendar year. Mr. Chairman, uh, in front of you this evening is the item for consideration, the uh, budget resolution, and what I'm going to present real quick is a real brief overview of the highlights. Um, there really aren't too many highlights because really the, the Department of Public Works budget this year is remaining virtually flat. But we start off the process, we, you know, we imagine, we design, we build. That's public works. That's what we do. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of the. So it's all based upon our vision. Of providing a public professional public works organization that will offer quality infrastructure and services in a sustainable way that will contribute to making Sheboygan a desirable place to work, live, and play. And that helps really go right into our, our, our mission, our three pillars of success, we'd like to call it. The first pillar being providing quality infrastructure that conveys safe, efficient delivery of essential goods and services to provide clean and beautiful public spaces that maximize the natural environment, enhance the overall quality of life, and to deliver a professional quality public service with a friendly and welcoming atmosphere. This really puts Sheboygan in, in, in a real good frame of, of reference. It tells you that you know, we are a large community, 15.8 square miles in area. I, I like roughly to say we're about eh, two and a half miles wide and probably almost seven miles long in, in, in cases for rough, rough, but that's roughly equates to about 200 miles of streets we maintain, 36 parks, over 209 uh, miles of sanitary sewer, 19 bridges every day. Steve at the wastewater treatment plant, we're treating 12 and a half million gallons of sewage every day. Almost 20,000 trees and 42 um, in the intersections and 185, almost 186 miles of storm sewer. So it, it just gives you kind of the, the, the enormity of the expansive infrastructure that, that the Department of Public Works in the city of Sheboygan has to offer for our citizens, our residents, our business community, and it's it's a it's a tremendous responsibility, and it's a true it's a tremendous cost. And when we're talking about this, you'll see Public Works is the largest function and portion of the budget. So operations budget, we have 28 different cost centers that represent various work activities within the DPW. Many of these cost centers for 2022's budget are remaining the same. So in other words, 2021 is the same for 2022. We didn't make really any changes. 
and our wastewater treatment plant, they, that's a portion on your water bill. There's a sewer, sewer charge. That rate is going to remain the same. There's no increase anticipated for 2022. So you're not able to get rid of this done. to the very top chart. Sure. I will do that. Can I, just do that? Just, I guess you're going to have to do that. Okay. <laughs> so this really just shows, and this the, the, this information is also in your pu uh, public works agenda package, but the general fund portion of the budget, that's the portion of the budget that the tax levy funds. Personnel services, just for DPW personnel, that includes their salary, overtime, health insurance, uh, pension and everything is roughly $6.6 .6 million for the Department of Public Works. If you go back to 2019, actual 6.6. .6. So you can see again, personnel wise, where we're remaining in the department is a pre pretty consistent trend. It's not going up and uh, we're remaining as flat as as we can. The rest of the budget, all, all of the general fund budget items for public works department, that would include contractual services, construction materials, equipment, uh, tools and equipment and other things. With, with the personnel and everything, it's total, total budget, 12, 12.4 roughly. 2021's budget, 12.4. Basically, we're actually from 2021 to 2022, we actually have a decrease of around $78,000 in the general fund portion of the budget that's being funded by the tax levy. And mainly, a lot of that was a result of the unfund, unfunded pension liability costs that were in the personal line <laughs> items that are no longer in there. And Caitlin's office and finance department worked and city administrator's office worked on, on creatively shifting that out of the personnel line items. So that, that really helped our overall budget because although we had a decrease, you'll see in the next couple of slides that we did have some increases in our, in, in our budget. They're mainly contractual services and CPI increases uh, due to utilities. So first of all, we're going to go right down the list. And a lot of this is right in your IFC packet, but I thought it'd be a little bit easier to give you some visuals. City Hall, we have like some decreases, 3,500 in heating, 2,500 in elevator maintenance and a decrease of 15,000 in electric. This is a, you know, from 2009 to 2021. What this chart represents, the blue is the actual totals of costs. The red line is a 2% annual inflation rate, just over, over that same period. And the orange line or yellow line, you can call it, is the actual linear smoothed line of the blue. So it's just basically taking that blue data and giving it a straight line projection. And if you notice, it's running right along with inflation, 2% annual. So it's, it's real conservative. So we're right on with, and that's after we did the major city hall renovation and added square footage, added uh, heating and ventilating and air handling units that were never never at City Hall before. So the, the additions in the building is efficient and it's, it's projecting very well. So some of the other highlights, public works administration, my area, we're decreasing our training and conferences by 2000. And mainly it's because, you know, one of the, one of the benefits of COVID is that we're finding you're able to do more online training and video conferencing instead of attending and going on. Uh, staying over at places and do, doing remote conferences. In fact, I'm going to be attending the national conference um, in a couple of weeks, and I'm doing it right from my desk. Engineering, there's an increase of 13,000. That's mainly due to the 
equipment that we use in the field for data collection and the GIS and everything is becoming more and more uh, electronic in terms of tracking, doing field collection, and working with the satellites and GPS technology for surveying. We also have a decrease, though, of 3,500 approximately again in training and conferences because of the online remote options. Our bridge budget is increasing 25,000, but that's mainly the H3 bridge, which is our only lift bridge in the city. And the computer system that operates it is uh, in major need of an upgrade. Uh, I think it was upgraded probably 10 years ago, and it's probably running Windows 2000. So, snow and ice, we have a decrease of $59,000 in the sand and salt line item. A couple, re with a couple reasons. Right now, we have our sheds full from last year, so that's a good thing. But also, we're going to much more, there's a real, um, we talk about environmental and sustainability. There's a real push to decrease the salt that is being put on the roads and going to more of a liquid de-icing. And that's what this picture shows. It's a treated brine that is down first snowfalls and it, it prevents that bonding to the pavement. So that's where some of the decrease that you're seeing with that as well. Sanitation and garbage, we're increasing that, that budget and there's a line item in there for transfer and tipping. We, we have a contract that manages, we take our garbage, we dump it at a transfer station, they pick it up, they load it and they haul it to the landfill. That's a contract that's for five years. Every year there's a, there's a CPI increase that's in that contract. The max is only 5%, but with the inflation where we're at, we just estimated this year with the way inflation's been going and costs, we estimated high on this at this point. We should get the numbers, uh, I'm thinking by the end of this month, I'm hoping on, on what it will be next year. Sanitation for street cleaning, same thing. When we street, sweep the streets, we have debris to get rid of. There's a slight decrease in, in that. However, the residential drop-off, we're having to increase 10,000 for contracted services, mainly for our branch grinding that we do, as well as, again, 7,400 for increase for tipping. We get uh, the garbage that gets brought to the drop-off site has to be disposed of again. Those costs accordingly to the CPI. You know, parks decrease of 840 bucks, nothing too serious. Again, we're talking, you're talking about an operational budget of 13 million roughly. Again, I'm just trying to give you some of the changes. They're they're not much, but I wanted to at least convey at least what we what we did this year. Harbor Center Marina Fund, there is there is quite a few items here. Uh, it, it's not funded by the tax levy. So, but there's an increase in some of their contracted services. That's a contractual increase. There's an $84,000 spend, and it's moving one of their dock sections. Their furthest north dock section, they're going to move it interior further because the whole north side of the docks are, are not usable because the water is not uh, deep enough. So, by moving it in, They'll increase their amount of slips, and they'll also generate then $50,000 annually in revenue. So it's got about a year and a half payback once we do that. Also, there's a $168,000 capital project of their fuel system. Their fuel system is original of when the marina was built, roughly around 94. I was going to say 2004, but that was Blue Harbor. Uh, so yeah, that fuel system is in, in need of an upgrade. The recycling fund, again, we we take our recyclables, we take them to the same transfer station, gets dumped, gets loaded, and it gets hauled away for processing. There's a fee for that. So that's going up by almost uh, 19,000 roughly. Wastewater treatment, again, as I said, there's no increases in the rates. Uh, these are just some, I just wanted to give you some visuals. Here's a nice aerial of the plant. Uh, here's some work that is being done. Uh, this is a, a clarifier that they've been rehabbing. 
operations and the lab. But I just wanted to show you, you know, roughly what, what the in revenue, it's right around 9.4. And you can see now next year we're going to get 19 million seven hundred thousand roughly. But that's because 10 million is being earmarked for that capital project along the lakeshore. So take take that capital out of here. You know, subtract that 10 million out of here and we're right back to the 9594. Again, the reason for no increase needed for the wastewater rates. Motor vehicle, uh, recognized area. Again, really not too much happening here. We've made some great, great improvements. And I'm showing you the revenues because finance and the administrator's office and the council have made a commitment to really start bringing the revenues back and getting this fund to be self-sufficient. That's what the fund was for. This again, wastewater, the motor vehicle fund, these aren't funded now through the tax levy. They're enterprise funds, they're proprietary funds. So they're separate of the levy. What has happened is over the years, motor vehicle was just held back, no, no increase, no increase, no increase for, for a long time. So our revenues were really never keeping up with our expenses. And that when, what we were doing is we were using fund balance out of the motor vehicle fund on an annual basis to make up that shortfall. Well, that's not sustainable. You need that fund balance to acquire new equipment. So what we did this year and we did last year is we raised it two and a half percent. And that's what this, this 2.3 now, it went from 2.92,000 2, 2, 2, to 2.3. So again, that, that additional revenue will help, again, establish that fund. So we're getting there, it's just taking time. So again, I just really wanted to give you the highlights. Um, it's all within your packet, but I thought instead of reading, I'd rather give you some visuals and happy to answer any questions. Hey, Marcus. Great presentation. Um, I really appreciated how you did some of the highlights there. Uh, you mentioned, though, I've got a bunch of questions in a row. You mentioned something about creative accounting regarding the unfunded pension liability. That sounds like Enron to me. Help me. <laughs> what it means is I don't know what what, the, what they did, but I'm happy because it helped their overall budget. But they know, and that's why Caitlin's here because uh, she can explain it much better than I can. <laughs> I'll say it's more strategic financial planning rather than creative accounting. So okay, the um, right. So the debt service fund actually has a fund balance currently in it, and it's been um, funded. There's this unfunded pension liability that's been in all these accounts in the general fund. The library's been paying it, and it's from it's in these personal services going to the debt service fund. So instead of having it come through those cost centers, it actually is going to be that debt related to the unfunded pension is going to be paid off through the debt service fund balance. Because it's a one-time debt that we don't have, we'll, we'll never have this particular debt again. We have sufficient fund balance to pay it off through the principal and interest, which is to 2027. So, and it still actually keeps a fund balance in there as well. So, in the grand scheme of things, it it appears that the debt service fund has had more revenue than it has needed each year. So it's accumulated this fund balance. So we're utilizing it to help offset some of these costs that were previously in these operating budgets. You can ask other one. So where did this, so the city did not pay the pension liability that it had in the past? It did not pay, but like when you, being a member of the WRS, I know what that was it. And so, in other words, like the right now, I think it's third, currently 13% or for employees wages, half of which is paid by the city. So the city wasn't paying that half. Is that what was occurring? So my understanding is in about 1992 or 1993, there was a change in WRS that required this every municipality that was participating to fund their full amount of pension liability. Yes. At that point, the city of Sheboygan actually almost had a loan out from the state of Wisconsin for that money. We've accumulated interest in things over the years. In 2007, and 
doing dates off my memory, so bear with me. 2007, we actually took out a different loan to pay off the state of Wisconsin. So the, the debt payment that's coming out currently is actually a bond issuance that was used to pay off the state of Wisconsin. They weren't paying it before. <laughs> and and in addition. It. Well, that, that was, uh, I guess, that was still, they didn't pay, pay their, so this was during the 90s or, the, or actually before the 90s? It was before the 90s. The change came in, I think it's 1993, okay. where the state required every municipality to pay their full share immediately, but then they offered an interest loan to any municipality that couldn't fund it at the time. Correct. And so um, this is a way to at least offset okay. the operating budgets and help out okay. everybody else. So, and what's the anticipated payoff on this loan? That's so it fine. is it is going to be paid off in 2027 because okay. it is a bond issuance. We have certain requirements that um, don't allow us to pay it off early, okay. but there could be, and I could actually reach out to Carol Worth to see if there's any option on any callable portions of that debt. And just a follow-up on that. So what is the fund again where it will come, up, where it will be transferred? It is going to be coming out of the debt service fund. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. My next question, I'm gonna get on my soapbox about solar panels. I've seen uh, like a million dollars worth of electrical cost. Can we not dedicate some of that money towards offsetting it with electrical panels? Marcus, I have that in the capital improvements program. Or when we replace this roof, yes, it's got over over almost 100,000 square feet of roof area. Um, but we don't want to put solar panels up until the roof's fixed. When are we fixing the roof? So well, it, it's got to go through capital improvements, and it will be again coming up this next year as a project, and we'll have to rank it. But that's part of the process. It there's the roof cost, and then there's the solar panel cost that would go then on as as an alternate uh, for energy savings that we could use directly at this facility to help offset our, our electrical here. But yes, um, you're, you're seeing it uh, more and more. And we've talked even at the treatment plant, some opportunities there, as you saw, it's a large area. So we're, we're, we're trying to look at areas. And, and again, we want to time it when we have those roof and we don't want to put it on an old roof and then have to take it off and all that. So that sense. Yeah, but it's there. We, we, it's about a... This project here, right alone, I'll just be honest with you, it's about a $2 million project. For for, just the, well, and the solar panels. So, but we're looking at some energy rebates to help offset some of that. So we'll, it, it, again, it's going to be a project submittal. It's going to be ranked. It goes through a process. And again, we have more projects and needs than we have money. So that's how things get dropped. I understand. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll step down off of that soapbox. Now, can we talk about vehicle rental? Um, we're renting $1.8 million in stuff as an expense out of the general fund. Correct. What are we renting? Well, that's how our motor vehicle fund it gains its revenue. Okay, so, so we, the so general fund is paying into the motor vehicle fund. Correct. So we charge ourselves an internal rental rate for the equipment. And also those enterprise funds such as Wastewater, mm -hmm. which is not, they, their tax are not their tax, but their rates in their budget also pays in for motor vehicles. That's why the revenue is like two point something. Exactly. Understood. Um, and then on both the recycling fund and the general fund, it looked like overtime was about 10% of the budget. Is that intentional 10%? It, no. No, it's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a function of holidays and having collection five days a week and six trucks a day. Therefore, we're, we're occasionally like when, I guess, uh, I guess we have to do like a Saturday pickup or a, a holiday pickup. That's where that overtime cost will come in. In the recycling fund. In the recycling fund, is, it's a split between recycling and then garbage as well. And 50-50 split? No, it's probably, 6040 three and recycling three. and the recycling manager comes overtime comes up the recycling garbage lead comes out of there yeah. and there's two recycling guys out of there and then four garbage 
So can we go more towards the general fund side of that, which is three hundred and sixty thousand dollars? More the other way. For, no, can I just can you explain to me better what what overtime is coming out of the three hundred sixty-two thousand dollars on the yeah, general fund? that's that's the that's now when I talk about the general fund, that is street work, that is snow plowing, that's parks, that's the entire department. So uh, that's where that that's the majority of the overtime. And, and quite frankly, you know, snow operations about a, is about a third of that. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm done asking about that one. It makes sense. Thank you. Um, boat facilities versus marina. Why are they two different things? Well, that's a good question, and we're trying to merge them. Okay. We just did not have time this year with the budget and the line, but we're we're working with we're working with F3 Marina because mm -hmm. right now the 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 difference is the riverfront area slips. Those are managed directly by Public Works, and, and we we take the rentals here. We do all of the maintenance. We do all the coordination with the removing of the docks, putting them in the docks in the spring, and so forth. Um, we talked with F3. They're they're willing to take that on as part of the marina, and uh, we think it's a good option. But that opens up their contract, and it's it will be some time to work through all the details. So, so I think for that's one of our priorities in 2022 is to get through those details so that in 2023's budget, it will be it will be merged, in other words. Thank you. Last question. I saw a line item for depreciation that was pretty high in one of the different special funds or designated revenue funds. Let me find it real quick here. Um, but we don't pay taxes. We get taxes. How do we have depreciation? Like, where is that money going? Because it's it, it's going somewhere. It's really a balance sheet item, so it's for audit purposes and to make sure that our assets are are accurately valued for the city on really in our financial statements. So it's in it's because of the type of fund it is, it's not coming out, it's not a cash type of transaction. It's really just a audit entry. So this isn't a it's not a cash budget here. This is a accrued budget. We have, yeah, government has a couple different types. So this one is is more of a business type budget. I'm, I'm just going to stop asking questions. So. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, want yeah. more clarification. No, no, no. <laughs> you went from accounting 101 to 301 on me, and I'm. <laughs> Thank you. I guess I just have a quick question. Uh, I see that personnel for like the streets and sanitation has reduced quite a bit in the city from like 2019 to now we're actually down 10 people is are, are, are we getting kind of close to the well I, I, point and that's i guess we're you know i mean I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that with these, the snow plowing and things mr. like that mr chairman i get you know that's and that's under my staff comments it, it, it's it's it just we're this this continuing trend of operating flat yeah. And uh, very restricted budgets uh -huh. um, is not going to be sustainable for for the long term. That's what I see. It. So I, I mean, I it, it's, it. it's 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 affecting down. it's going to affect operations. It's already affecting personnel. Okay. Um, we're 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 we. It's quite frankly, if they, I I've never had turnover in my tenure like we we're experiencing now. Uh -huh. um, it used to be when we have employees there. Hey, hey this is great. This is a great place to be. And man. Um, I'm surprised. It, 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 the market, granted, the market, the employability is is is, but um, it, it's 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 getting tough. So I, I know we've had conversations with the administration and the mayor's office and with Caitlin in terms of how do we, you know, where the, the state is. I, I was just, it's frustrating because the state really handcuffs us in terms of being flexible and how we're able to raise revenue. Uh, so, but at some point as a community, we're going to have to make a decision. What do we want to be and, and what level, what level of quality of services and community do we want? And then this is the cost or this is the value. And how do we get there? And I know administration and, and Todd and, and the mayor and Caitlin have been working with Ehlers on a strategic financial plan. And, and I, I think that's going to help provide that roadmap and blueprint for the future. But this is tough. I'm proud of what we're submitting, but I mean, 
if I'd love to have more money, trust me, because we could do more. I mean, with, yeah. with more resources, then I'm just saying money is not just it's not just labor, but it gets materials. It, it gets it helps everything. No. So I, I and that's that's just my commentary. But I think, you know, we're, we're I think where we're at now and with the plans that are being put in place, we will get there. And uh, it, it's it's becoming more and more uh, attentive in terms of really being important. Yeah. And I, I see it with the council. And I see it with the administration. It, it, I think we're going to get there. Because I see, I see it as you, you're, you're at the bottom. It's hard. I, you, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think, I think you're, you know, if you, we, have a, we have a bad winter. You, you're going to be, you're going to be hurt. I think so. I really do. I think with that, with, with that amount of personality, because you're just that many less people to snow, plow and snow. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, in, in 2004, the department yes. had 100, 154 employees. Today we're at 100. So. I'm just, I'm just getting, now I'm not saying we need to go all to the 154, but it, it, it just gives you a perspective of, of, of a you know, 16 year, 17 year period through attrition and holding the line and not backfilling and, and things. Um, you, you're getting to that critical mass of how, how you're right. Jason, Jason struggles with it every winter. And yeah. trust me, he's, he's already on me. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Well, that's why I brought it up because I, I I see that as a critical point. You just you know you're 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 ten people less than you were two years ago, and that's I think that's you know that's concerning, and I think that's concerning. Okay, we're we're going to have to address this in the near future. I guess yes. that's what uh, my my best way of saying it. So, were you able to actually increase the minimum uh, the the wages of the workforce? I mean the hourly workforce. To adjust to the to do the current job market, that is be that that's under study as we speak, and I'm waiting for the results of that. You're talking about the study, the audit that is citywide. Yes, you could. So you didn't do anything. You didn't try to do anything. Not, not we're, I'm, we're, we're we're waiting. Uh, and I'm anticipating that there's going to be a there's going to be an adjustment needed. Um, we're all, again we're already facing that already with some of the market pressures as I mentioned. Uh, with employees coming in, working, and leaving within a short period. That, that's again, that's kind of a little bit unheard of over the years. So, um, can I ask you uh, how much do we pay uh, the workforce, for example, that you use uh, on hourly basis during the winter time? Uh, is it at twelve dollars? It is about fifty dollars, forty dollars. It, uh, I would say it's roughly between $22 and $24 an hour. So we have different levels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Coming in, we're, we're on, if you don't, if you have a CDL, I, I have to bring guys in around midpoint, which is around $20 and it's a little low. If you don't have a CDL, we're in around 18 and then we bump you up as soon as we do the same. So I don't know what the so, CDL is. But so commercial driver's license. Okay. So without a CD, you would you would consider unskilled someone without CDL. Right. CDA. So we hired um, two individuals that didn't have a CDL. We got them trained, so they came in a little lower than if mm -hmm. you do have a CDL. Which would be around eighteen dollars. My top equipment operator that can operate every piece of equipment in the building is I've got four of those equipment operators, and they're between twenty nine and thirty dollars. Very good. So the unskilled would be around eighteen dollars. And the fear about that is that you've got you've got people looking at like the county and things like that mm -hmm. that are poaching these guys and because so, they can yeah. make more money at, at, and that's... we had um I hired a maintenance worker one without a CDL. I trained him, he plowed for me for three years, he left for two dollars to go to the plow. So I have a I have another question. Sure. sure. When we uh when uh, I started uh, my work with the common council. I remember the first thing I was asked to evaluate was the CIP. I think it was my first or second meeting. <laughs> and uh, we jumped right into it. Yes, right. And uh, it was fantastic because I was able to, you know, get into the numbers a little bit. One thing that stuck with me was uh, how low was the budget up, um, allotted for the maintenance of sidewalks. It stuck with me. I was really impressed. 
Now, would, the, would this be the time? I don't think there has been any change on that. Would this be the time that we could discuss any changes on that allotment, on that appropriation? And if yes, how should we address it? Well, uh, I would, I guess, in terms of the budget, I guess, Thomas, is that, I mean, is that, I think the capital is part of the overall operations budget resolution that's in front of everybody this evening? I, I believe it, I believe it is. So I, 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 as a committee, you, you could discuss and deliberate to make a recommendation that ultimately would come out of this committee and I guess go to the common council. But it could also be coming out directly at the committee of the whole. Right. You could do it that way right. as well. Very good. So I, I reserve that option. Thank you. But also you could comment on the fact that do oh, you agree? Do you I, agree? I'm not going dis to disagree. Oh, we, 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 have, we have probably over 300 miles of sidewalks to maintain. And you're right. Uh, but it, it's, we, we, it's a general allotment every year. We go out uh, systematically trying to do inspections and repairs. And it's been 100,000 for several years. And as you are all aware, aware of, with inflation, that 100,000 isn't doing the same amount of work that it did five years ago. It's doing a lot less. Yeah, actually it was 80,000. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And I understand, no, I understand that the it's not is. exactly priority. Um, and it is the typical situation in which it's not high priority. It's not bottom line. It doesn't uh, it doesn't provide revenues, but still is something that affects a you know the the that section of the population that has issues with mobility, seniors. Uh, it makes it the city less walkable, less attractive, um, especially in some areas of the city. Um, the more I drive around and look around, the more I see the conditions of those. So I, again, I just, it seemed to me that thinking of $80,000 a year, I don't know even how many feet you fix with $80,000. I mean, I would love to know actually, how much do you actually fix or maintain with $80,000? I don't know that you, you can do more than what? Well, we it, it's we base it not necessarily on linear feet. We can calculate that. We do it on square feet because it's squares. Uh, I'd say it's probably about twenty thousand, roughly, square feet. Kevin, do you recall what our sidewalk total was in the bid? Over the nine thousand square feet. Oh boy, I suppose. And I, I used to run the sidewalk program back in the eighties and nineties. I guess prices have increased, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm not, you're right. It, they're, they're, it, again, as I, as I stated, we have more, more needs and more projects than we have money. So again, it, how do we prioritize? How do we increase? And if we increase in this area, do we take some from somewhere else or the one, the one advantage of the sidewalk program is, is that those charges are assessed to that property. So when we fix the sidewalk, the property owner actually pays for it. But I, I was under the impression that this, that is not happening anymore. For sidewalks, it is. Except if unless it's a tree. If it's a tree yes. that's raised your sidewalk, we'll, we'll pay for the tree damage. But if it's the rest of your sidewalk that gets repaired, then the homeowner gets gets that put on. They, they have an option to pay it right away, or they can put it on their their property tax as a special assessment. So, what is it that that eighty thousand dollars budget covers? Ah, uh, I'd say probably fifty percent of it is city cost, and the other half is property owners reimbursing the city. Now, the difficulty with that being reimbursed is they have the ability to do it over time. So when we do our assessments to say we, we charge 40,000 and the bills are out there, we don't get 40,000 back right away. So on a cash flow basis, it's coming in year after year, trickling in. And so it's kind of constantly rolling forward, in other words. But this budget's not cash flow. 
octopus. There, well, they, so <laughs> if, if a, is this in the capital? This is in the, this, this would be, well, it's in the capital, but it's under the special assessment fund or cash. It would come out of the capital cash fund. Special revenue. Special revenue, yeah. So the, there is cash, of course, involved. So it's going to just be uh, <laughs> um, kind of the rotating schedule, like um, Director Beagle said, if we're not getting the money back in. Um, there is a fund balance, I believe, in this fund. I, I can look at what that is. And not all of it comes back in, correct? Because not all because, of because, it. because of the tree damage. Correct. And things like that. And does this also take care of some, some city-owned areas where city, there's city sidewalks also, too, True. in that. So. Correct. Right, which perhaps is part, it's more what, what I meant, although, so basically, we don't know at this point what is the sidewalks that are uh, city owned or that the city is fully responsible for, and what is, in fact, oh. proportionally, what is that the city? Oh, it, for city owned sidewalks versus private, uh, the, well, they're all, they're all city sidewalks. Right. Let's let's just be fine. <laughs> what 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 is what I would say? How we characterize it? What's what would be eligible for uh, assessments? And I uh, I would say it's about ninety five percent of the city is accessible. We it's not we we have sidewalks by parks, but uh, other than that, um, it was one of the things with with uh, non taxable properties such as churches and some of in the schools. They still have to. They still pay for like a special assessment if we would assess for for those improvements. So that's one thing. So yeah, it's it's a large proportion of that would not be city owned. And finally, on this topic, is is that uh, common practice for cities to assess private owners to fix the sidewalks? Yeah, in fact, there, it, it's common practice for streets where 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 we're, I, I think it's a, uh, in my, I think it's the, one of the better things that the city has done is we've eliminated the street assessments. Mm -hmm. So when we would go out and do a, a street improvement, that would have to be calculated and it was per lineal foot of your property and you would get a bill per foot. If you had a 60 foot lot. Okay, I did. Yeah. I did. That was <laughs> first gift as soon as I bought the house in Orange. Yeah. But so, so that, that's the clear. Um, when was that changed? Uh, that was changed roughly 2017, yeah. 16, yeah. 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 2017. Yeah. So I assume that um, the sidewalks in theory, the sidewalk current assessment system, system could be also challenged and changed. It could be. The, the difficulty with that is uh, the city has uh, how do we part of the the city, the city by state statute is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of city sidewalks and by by having it all picked up by the city the, the, the fear would be is that we would have far more requests for work than we would have the ability to repair and the money to repair and therefore, once we're on notice of an area that may be uh, not sufficient and someone would be injured, uh, I leave it up to Thomas on how we could. But that's part of the reason why we have an annual program where we go out on complaint basis, we'll inspect, we do a systematic, we have zones. Um, and it's, it's been held up and uh, through through time and time again is that the understanding is the the expectation of a city is we can't fix everything all the time. It's just too much of a, a large of a problem. But we do have a program. We recognize it. We do have an inspection. We do have a budget set up for it, and we have the ability to go out and check on complaints. So that's kind of the basis of the program. I guess the, the 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 dilemma would be if you would take it to the next step and there would be no assessment when we're out there fixing some panels that are the the request would be I want it all done because I want it all to match but not all panels need to be repaired so that's where we the if you want to have them all done and you're going to pay for it we'll do it for you 
But if we're out there and we're only taking care of the bad panels and you're going to have two nice brand new sidewalk panels, but you'll have some older, worn, discolored panels next to it, um, that's fine as well it, in terms of being a, a safe, walkable surface. And I guess my comment on that would be that, that with, with, with the system in place we have now currently, that also, I think it brings in more people to do their own, to take care of their own, instead of, you know, if we went to a different point, we wouldn't have that and you would have, like you said, you'd, all you have would be all these requests, I want my whole sidewalk replacement, I want my whole, I think, this way if somebody comes in and they say, you know, I got four panels that are shot, I'd like to have the whole thing done right away, I want it all to match, so that, right. and, and people do that, I mean, it happens all the time, yes. so, or the, I'm having my driveway done, I'm going to do the sidewalk right away. That is true. The only thing is that then it ends up that the landlords that are responsible may work on that. And those in some areas of the city where there are mostly landlords that are not, are not as responsible, they will not take care of that. So the, 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 the actual result is that in some areas they are more deteriorated and they will be more deteriorated because it, it's almost considered an optional fix for anybody and rentals go i mean tenants go uh, in and out and they will not you know even uh express a concern about that in some cases and i just want to i don't want to take more of the time on the committee but there is one more thing about this similar question alleys what i don't understand yet when an alley is maintenance is um, responsibility of the city, when it is not, when is the uh, residents that are assessed, and that's because I have been visiting some constituents, and so I have been witnessed the conditions of some alley that are, a couple of them, they were worse than those that I have seen in Sao Paulo, Brazil, when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that, uh, you know, there is one in particular that I was really shocked to, to witness. So, on that note, so I, I, have, I have a neighborhood association meeting I got to run through. Okay. So, so, so just the question I, is, that, that, they, the, the alleys are publicly, they're, they're city, they're city owned and, and they're, they're public right away. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're not, they're not prioritized in the sense that, again, we have 200 miles of city streets to maintain and the streets are our main or the main source of transportation through the community. It serves a greater good. The alleys serve the immediately benefiting properties. Now we do some alley repair and that's in the case of when we have our own equipment, we're collecting garbage in an alley and it's getting troublesome for our, our workers or our equipment. We'll actually go in and do some repairs. So it's, it's, it's better for and safer for our operation. Um, but yeah, it, 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 if an alley would really get repaired, it would take really all the neighbors to get together and say, we want to do this and we're going to, we're going to pay for it. So, but, but they, otherwise it is up to the city to maintain the alleys. There are no, there is no that same situation in which the residents would be assessed. If, 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 if it's a complete repair okay. of an alley, they would be assessed for an alley. So the, it doesn't apply the same idea that we apply to roads and streets. Right. Because, because, like because the greater the greater traveling public and the citizens all use the roads frequently to travel. The alleys really serve the property and the garages of those residents. And that's kind of the distinction. Uh, okay. It's still public. Don't give me, it's still a public right away. And um, if there's drainage issues or some other issues that are, we we also go in and repair those. But if it's just a rough alley and it's not in good condition, yeah, yeah. And now I understand why. Yeah. Yes, so I, I think we are we are pushing the boundaries of the agenda topic. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I understand, and I apologize for no. that. It's and actually very useful, though, the clarification. Thank you. All righty. Any other comments, questions on this? Do we have a motion on this, then? Move to approve. Second. Motions are made to approve. Send to council. Uh, any other discussion on this? Great job. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Is that opposed? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Our next meeting is October 26th, 2021. We've exhausted the agenda. Move to adjourn. Second. Made and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Come on.